I am assigned to handle the topic about stress management or specifically how to handle stress for the newly hired teachers. So I will start by saying that teaching is the most stressful work or occupation ever invented by people. I think second to motherhood. So teaching is different from other profession because there are lots of factors and concerns that actually promote stress and have a high level of stress among teachers and specifically newly hired teachers. So it is important that newly hired teachers in the public school system would be given right orientation that would help them survive the challenges of the teaching world. Because failure to be assimilated to the culture of deaf ed would lead to anxiety, depression, and burnout. So it is important that teachers would live a happy life because I would also emphasize that other than teaching, a teacher has different or various ways or dimensions in his or her life. It is not just about limited to teaching. So uh, there are, according to the research that I conducted, there are three major causes of stress in the teaching world. First is the workload, second is student behavior, and third is responsiveness to uh, stakeholders in education, like parents, colleagues or co-teachers, parents, authorities, and community people. So these three major causes of stress are factors that must be addressed properly so that you would have an easier life in teaching. But I cannot assure you that this orientation would make your life easy. But this would just give you tips on how to deal with different people and different circumstances. Okay. So I would start with... <laughs> by the way, are you ready now? Don't be... Don't be uh, don't be afraid because I know that the orientation, the, the, the series of topics provided by my colleagues I gave you already the opportunity and the ideas on how to deal with the different situations they would experience in teaching. So I would start with discussing workload. Why workload is the number one cause of stress in the, in the workplace. So what are the uh, factors or what are the examples of stress co causing activities or situations or conditions referring to workload? So we have here too much lesson preparation. Yes, too much as in too much lesson preparation. Unlike other profession, teaching is beyond eight to five. When you go home, you have to bring your your modules, the test papers, and the different assignments, curricular, ancillary responsibilities that are assigned to you. Okay, other other jobs they would just simply go home and enjoy the rest of the day. But teaching is different. And then you will also experience modifying lessons for students with special needs, students with academic and other difficulties. So that's why you have to be oriented that in the senior high school, we are implementing the, the system of reporting students with difficulties, be it in academic, failure to submit modules in time, and not submission of modules. So we have a, an intervention form, just ask a copy from your master teachers. Okay, then we have here checking preparing and checking of modules, having multiple subjects to be handled. And that is really true, especially for those assigned in the major. So uh, you are not only be teaching one subject or one preparation, but you would be teaching two majors and one minor subject as well. Then um, you would be having extra duties 
for absent teachers. Okay, especially if you're a non-advisory, you would be uh, handling um, the slots or the responsibilities of teachers who are absent, especially those who are in the quarantine status because of the new normal. And also, last but not the least, are the uns ancillary, the ancillary works like committee chairmanship and membership. So that is normal in DepEd. Aside from teaching, which is your main job, you'd also be assigned a various ancillary um, responsibilities. But if you would just have a positive mind, then you would learn from those ancillary responsibilities as well. Okay, so how you will be addressing all those concerns referring to the workload? Okay, so I would be discussing it from my experience as a former teacher. Also, I've been in the teaching profession for, I think, uh, 23 years already, both, not just both, but I have had have experiences teaching elementary, teaching secondary students, teaching colleges and universities, and even teaching adult learners inside and outside the Philippines. So Philippines, so I would be sharing to you my personal uh, strategies in dealing with the stressors in the workload. So first is be honest and talk, um, talk to your immediate superiors superiors in our in your case the master teachers when uh i am referring here to the workload to the subject assignment so uh, talk to your um superior with regards to what are your strengths as a teacher uh, what are the, your preferred subjects and if assigned to a subject that you are not so comfortable ask for assistance from your master teachers so that you would be given proper guidance as well. Okay, I will transfer here so to give way to this part for some notes. <laughs> okay, then um, next is get advanced information from teachers, master, from experienced teachers and masters, master teachers about the class you're handling. I'm referring to the, the, the kind of students that you will be handling now in your new assignment. So get advanced information about um, students, you know, those problem students, students that must be given extra attention, not really special because you know the word special is not so good when dealing with uh, students because nowadays they are uh, considered negatively. So extra attention because like special needs, special attention. So the best word for that is extra attention. And then about the modules, about the, uh, the uh, many modules to be checked. Okay, this is really a major problem among teachers now. So uh, every week, especially if you're handling multiple sections, multiple subjects, you would be checking not just hundreds, but your yeah, hundreds. Yeah, hundreds of modules, but if you would not be checking them regularly, thousands of modules for, for a quarter. So what is the technique here is you have to implement the divide and the conquer strategy. Divide the modules, like um, assign modules to be checked every day, especially when you are in a work from home status. Now, hinahinaya siya o check. So not a regular assignment, pila ka bog imong i-check rung adlawa. So that you would avoid the situation of mag-cramping na ka, no? uh, The tendency there is, di na lang yung ka mag-check. That's the worst, no? Tungod kay, uh, wag di nakakaapas, no? So maghangad langit na lang ka. And that is a, a very negative practice um, by a teacher. So start good, no? Start right. Do not, do not do it because that would be taken against you. Um, if ever you would be caught by authority, by your master teacher, by your principal, then you can be, uh, you know, given warning and the appropriate sanctions for the non-checking of the modules. So, para dili ka ma-stress sa kadaghan, hinay-hinaya siya. Now, divide and conquer. So, um, di ka ma-stress. Ano ako ma-stress manggaling gamay la. Okay. And then, it is also very important that you would have an open mind, a positive mind about 
about teaching and the teaching responsibilities. Because if you have a negative heart, a negative mind about teaching, everything, even even if it's easy, even if the task is simple, would be very difficult. So accept the reality that you are now in the teaching world, and the teaching world is full of challenges. Every day is a new day, and you'll be dealing with many people, especially on a regular status, dealing with people, children, school children with different personalities. So be positive and uh, try to learn from every day's experience, okay? So that's it. Now, so uh, that's how you deal with the workload. So uh, the most important thing that I would like to emphasize is be a regular with the checking of the modules because that is really the number one cause of stress among teachers nowadays. And with the number one cause of stress, which is the work-related factors. So now I'll go to the student behavior. Okay. So uh, uh, this new normal student behavior is not very obvious because we have a limited uh, interaction with our students, but still you would experience uh, there's the different student behavior and and why it's the number uh, there's the second cause of stress to teachers. Okay, so what are the what are the um, you know the areas? We're in student behavior is also a major concern. Not just also, but they're really a major concern uh, in teaching. Okay, so first is cl classroom management. Uh, in this sense, online classroom management, how you deal with your students uh, on the online teaching is really very challenging nowadays, especially that um, our students also are stressed in as much as we are stressed people and then we have to understand that as a teacher it is your risk your responsibility to shape the classroom culture so as new teacher you have to develop your own classroom culture it's how you would be uh, uh, remembered by your students in line with the classrooms uh, culture is the teacher's presence concept now the, this too the classroom culture and the Teacher's presence are something that you would be developing starting from day one. No? So classroom culture is the environment inside your classroom. So um, how, how you deal with the students, how you react to different situations that occurs every day. As what I told you, every day is a new day. Do not expect that it because it is teaching is a rotinary activity you would experience the same thing no every day is a new day and every day is a learning day for for teachers not just even new teachers but even experienced teachers so um, teachers presence is the concept of how you want to be remembered by your student it is all about your personality uh, it's how you talk how you deal with students how you dress, how you project yourself, and different concepts that would be inculcated and remembered by your students years after. Do you want to be remembered as very strict but reasonable, flexible, yet authoritative, or lax and demanding, very friendly, uh, you know, a teacher who is a friend to all, okay, but negatively, um, f uh, friendly because you are not demanding is it positive or is it negative or a lazy teacher so uh, those two concepts are really very important um, the uh, classroom culture and the teacher's presence next is because of the new normal uh, so um, though we are doing the printed module instruction but still we have to reach out to reach out to our students through online platforms, uh, the, the social media applications. So expect that there would be invasion of your me time, na even gabi ina, na, uh, or naakasa di maayong uh, condition, health condition, but still students would be reaching you out, how you deal with them. And then you would also experience lack of social etiquette uh, from our students, uh, not following online protocols and um, demanding students, unresponsive students to your instruction in your group chats 
and then uh, sometimes busy <laughs> busy uh busy students and even and coaches and you know and other and other adjectives okay so how you deal with student behavior especially this new normal so it is very important that starting from day one as your new teacher you have to develop your own presence and your own culture okay so how you will do this is you must first set your rules and regulations and stick to it from day one okay so uh, i would like to emphasize that in classroom discipline or in dealing with students behavior and misbehavior consistency is the name of the game you should be consistent and then i would also try to highlight this uh, as as a new teacher be friendly no? especially that you are not so distant with regards to the age gap but be authoritative friendly but authoritative it's different when you are friendly and you would not impose authority now though you are not very far with regards to age but still the fact remains that you are their teacher so you should you know you should impose your authority to your students and then lastly i would also emphasize that you have to serve not just a teacher but as a coach to your students coach and a guidance counselor no? especially nowadays that our students are very stressed with the the module instruction and the lack of the face-to-face -face, uh, teaching instruction teaching learning instruction is limiting the opportunities of our students to learn because i agree that there is really no best substitute for for face-to-face -face. online teaching even with the uh, the numerous gadgets the numerous platforms that promotes promote education cannot really fully supplement the the positive effect of online teaching so on all face-to-face -face teaching so they are really our students really uh, are stressed and they need the students uh, the teachers attention and help okay so you have to coach your student do not just act as a teacher do not but act as a facilitator as a guidance counselor as a coach as a brother a sister and the best work is responsibility is act as a mother because a mother's love is really the highest form of love do you agree master teachers <laughs> Okay, that's it. And the third factor or cause of stress is responsiveness to stakeholders in education, like um, admin school administrators, colleagues, parents, and community people. Okay, so this is also very complicated because I I work as a as an operations manager before. And I work hand in hand with the human resources um, director of the company, and uh, I tediously check the um, resignation of our of our uh, colleagues of our coworkers, and I realized now when I did, you know, online uh, assessment to those who applied for resignation, the number one cause but it was not really given as in abruptly so uh, in the middle of our discussion our online discussion it was revealed that they were not happy huh, with their working environment dealing with their colleagues and dealing with your boss so uh, i always believe that the human investment is the highest form of investment so when you're losing one worker in the company or in the organization that is really expensive so uh, as much as possible i would like to coach you to to be happy and to learn as you go along the way and i would like to emphasize that even if you are new to the organization you are an important um, prison in the organization that is why we're giving you this orientation because we believe that you can give 
much to the organization. Your skills, you, though you are still very young, but your skills would be very helpful to the realization of the goals, uh, the vision, mission, and goals of uh, the Senior High School Department of Dr. Cecilia Putong National High School. So how to deal with different st stakeholders like parents? <laughs> this is really very difficult, no? dealing with parents. So uh, we like it or not, parents is the most important partner of teachers in education. Thus, uh, they are indispensable. They are really part of the student's journey from day one up to graduation. So when you are dealing with parents, it must be that you're dealing with, with uh, authority, but in the same time, you should not make them feel threatened, that they feel welcome, and they feel that they are important partners in the education of their children. So this would be my tips, personal tips as a teacher of, as a, a part of the teaching profession for so long. Okay, so I would start with uh, building parent guardian trusts. Okay, building parent guardian trust. This should be this should be the 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 salig, no pag salig, sa usag usa the trust. So um, this means that you have to involve our parents regularly, and. So uh, I noticed that we only, uh, the, the usual thing now, the usual thing is we only call the attention of the parents when their children commit mistakes or violate uh, a provision of the uh, student handbook or the rules and regulations of the school or the ed. And there's nothing wrong with that. But why not also call the attention of the parents when, you're, when their children achieve or do positive things? Okay, so... Uh, uh, in private school, they had this anecdotal anecdotal uh, book, but we don't have it, a notebook, we don't have it in depth ed. But uh, when you have opportunities to, to talk about uh, the, the achievement, the positive things that are being attained by the uh, children, so if you have opportunity, why not, why not share it to, your, to their parents or guardians? Okay? This means that you show care to their children, and um, I would suggest that if it is possible, you give them online orientation. No? So involve your parents on the education of your children by giving online orientation of the, schools, of the school rules and regulation. This is applicable when you will become uh, classroom advisors. Okay, so um, give a short talk uh, anytime or every time you have a, a you have a, uh, say, a contact with your parent, no? like when the parent is submitting or collecting the modules. No? So two minutes of informal talk about the achievement of the students would be enough to make our parents feel and realize that you as a teacher or you as the advisor care for their children. Okay. Then I would also emphasize that Though you are friendly and accommodating, there is also a great need to establish your authority. Okay, so uh, I noticed that there are, no, by experience, I have colleagues, no, it's easy for, for, for some teachers to deal with the different misbehaviors, with the different personalities of their, of their uh, advisory class or, or students, but, you know, they would be in fear when um, meeting or dealing with your parents. Kana bitaw mo rip kana panhaw ni mong ni mong ginikanan, ang ginikanan sa mga bata nga nay gihimo nga nga misbehavior or commission of or a violation of a specific provision in the uh, school manual. Uh, mangurog ng uban, mangurog ng uban tungod kay mahadlok, especially knowing the background of the parents like <laughs> a, a parent nga nay authority dakog 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 rank, na. So uh, how I usually, you know, do this kind of scenario is that um, I made an advanced research about these parents, no? Kana mga previous advisors, previous advisors of the students. So, mga yu ka og tips, no? So, mga yu ka og, og advice sa on pag, pag deal ani nga mga parents. Um, knowing the background of the parents would make you understand and specify a... Um, a concrete action with when you are dealing with this parent. Okay, 
So um, I would start. Na I would start with, you know, very important tip niya siya. Uh, kung makikistorya ka sa mga parents, um, speak with low voice. Kanang gentle words gamit ng mga use gentle words in a slow pitch. Why? Because high pitch um, triggers aggression and negative emotions. Kanang murag mang mangisog pud kung isog ang imuhang tunada na mangisog pud ang atong kaistorya. So speak with low voice and use right words. Ana na siya na. And then be friendly yet authorita- authoritative. Uh, you have to understand that between you and the parent, ikaw mo ay nai authority, ikaw mo ay nakaibaw sa situation. So, ikaw dapat magdala sa sto- sa conversation, dili ikaw ang dalon sa parent. Okay. Then, um, look, um, look the person in the eye. Tanawa siya sa mata. No, be sure nga, wa kay muta. <laughs> Wait, no, joke lang. No, so, look the person in the eye because, you know, when you are looking at the eye of the person, it shows confidence. Ha? So, ayaw lang po sigaan ng imong mata. Then, awal lang din siya mag ka. So, ayaw mong good kay mag- magpadala ta sa tension sa itong kadlok, magdungo-dungo ta. Na? So, um, do the regular conversation. Like when you are conversing with your friend or family member, look at the eyes. Okay, that means that you are confident. Okay. And then, it is also very important that when you are talking with a parent, especially when dealing about a misbehavior of a parent, you are ready with your reports, with your documentation. Na? So, dapat ready na. Ano, ipatawag man mo siya tungod kay na gihimong and ani. So, based on the investigation or based sa report mo, siya na itabo. Na? So, basin pag, pag patawag ni mo, ay hapa po ka ng uha o data regarding the conduct, the misconduct of their kids. Na? So, that means that you are not ready. So, katawan ka or mapungot ang parent ni Moana. So, you should be ready with the documents. And, um, yes, kung during the conversation, unya, you did not reach out to a resolution or wala gid mo yung nahimong nga, nga, ang sama na na, um, what, agreement, then you have to refer the, the case to the authorities, like to, to your master teachers or to your year level coordinators or to me as your assistant principal. You have to follow protocol when you are reporting cases to authorities. Do not report directly to the principal. Okay, atong head principal, si Mamorin Castaño, overloaded na siya. So, report sa daan sa inyong master teachers, sa inyong year level coordinators, kung di gid matabang, report it to me before tamo ato sa principal or sa grievance committee. Okay, that's it. Another important stakeholders in education are the school administrators. So the school administrators are the one managing the school and they are your bosses. So in our senior high school setup, there is a unique, um, you know, there are unique positions in the senior high school because the master teachers which act as the uh, uh, academic coordinators of the different uh, subject areas also served as the head teachers okay and then i am your assistant secondary school principal for the senior high school and for the junior high school there are head teachers okay and I have two colleagues, they are already presented. Uh, so, see si Ma'am Tess Laruda for operations and Sister Danielle for junior high school academics. And finally, we have uh, Miss Maureen Costanio, our principal three. At the same time, na po tayo mga higher apps na sa the division office, the regional app to the national. So, um, these authorities are important partners in your, in your teaching career because you like it or not, every day you will be dealing with these administrators. That is why it is very important that you would start it right with these school authorities. Okay, so what are the tips that I would like to share to you in dealing with these authorities? First yes, number one, very important. You have to give an impression. You have to give an impression that you are 
interested to learn and that you are coachable. Na? So, kaning bago pa bitaw tao sa high, we are full of ideals, especially gikan tag mga dagko ang universities, graduate tag mga very you know, prestigious universities. So, sa high, maka-experience tag na ay mga bagong teacher nga, mga makainun tag mga dagugulo. <laughs> and, uh, when a new teacher is confident, that is actually positive. So, if, if the administrator would be able to tap this confidence, then it would be used in a positive way. Pero kung dili, mahimo siya nga negative. That is why, as a new teacher, you have to, to give an impression that you are really interested sa imohang, imohang trabaho. No? Not because it is mandatory for scholars of the DUST to be assigned teaching uh, jobs, then wala kay mayon ka wala man koy choice kay ka na mo many mo many parts sa akong contract first and foremost kay bow na kadaan nga part na siya sa package when you applied for scholarship so that is why you have to love the profession na so every day na mga challenges na mga challenges so you have to show to the administrators na you're really interested to learn i am here for business i am here to learn in order for me to share the best that I can, the best that I have, and the best that you can give me as my school administrator, and that I am coachable. Now, I am new. I don't have the teaching experience and you know other work experiences, but I am coachable. I can learn from the things that you would share to me. Now, so, dapat ana ang, ana ang attitude ha. Ana ang gusto na kong attitude nga makita ninyo. Do not give problems to our master teachers. Do not give me problems. Okay. Next is perform your tasks. Pass the requirements on time. And be courteous. Na? So, perform your tasks. Inyong mga grades, inyong lesson plan, inyong mga reports, dapat ipasa na siya on time. Nga kung maglisod mo, ask help from your from your master teachers, from your year level coordinator. Do not assume nga you learn everything. No? Like, na-experience na ako. No? Uh, I was, I've been teaching for, for say, 10 years in a big university. Pag-abot na ako sa DepEd, wala ko gi-coach. So, na, na culture siya ko. No? And in fact, na ako yung mga di maayong uh, mga relationship with some of my administrators tungod kay kanang mo po ni nawala na ako no? kana bang ay ay kana ba dang grabe ko ka grabe ko mo insist nga ani magud ni ako ni bawan and i wasn't able to properly kanang reorient or recalibrate myself to the deep ed culture nga lahi ang deep ed culture and makaybora ka unsang kalahi sa deep ed culture so uh, Okay, so pass requirements, do not assume that you know everything. You ask help from your colleagues, experienced colleagues, and be courteous. Mga importante yun ni kayo, no? Kanang be courteous yun ta kay kuan man siya. Now, those would create a positive image. Start right. That is why it is very important that um, you would be surrounded by positive people. Get away from from colleagues nga negative ang ilang pagtanaw sa education, ang uh, pag ang ilang perception sa trabaho. No? Because those those would be assimilated sa imong system. Unya mahimo po kang negative. Unya bago pa ka. So how could you how what can you expect every day from from your day to day interaction with your colleagues, with your administrators, with your students and parents, with your mojos kung negative ka na. No? So everything is heavy. Bugat na siya. No? So, be surrounded by, by positive people. Kanang makaila naman kasi may mga kauban day by day. No? But I'm not saying nga uh, imog yung likaya ng mga, na, mga negative ideas or negative perceptions about teaching. What I mean is, um, do not stick to those people nga dili maka-help ni mo. But of course, you should still be friendly with those uh, people. And Still, you would learn many things from them, but you should be balanced, no? You should be balanced. And as, as much as possible, if you want to have a um, happy learning, working experience here in DepEd, be surrounded with positive people. And the next is, um, kani, no? request assistance from authorities and from colleagues, but 
use your common sense. There is nothing wrong when asking or requesting help from us, from your master teachers and colleagues, but use your common sense as well. Meaning, um, learn from from your mistakes and from your ad, from the advices that you receive, and try not to commit again. Now, nya ka ng mga butang nga common sense na bitaw ang gamito. Na ayon na na ayon na kanang pangayuy o advice. Because, um, you know, if you, even small things, pangayuan pa ni mga advice, that means that uh, you are not a responsible person. Nga murag, dili siyang, dili good kay murag, but nagpakita na siyang, uh, you are a weak person. Okay, as what I told you, you are a person of authority now. Nga nasood ka sa DPED sa teacher, you are already a person of authority. And what is expected from you is dapat na kay mga prior knowledge. That is why it is advice that you would review no kung especially ang mga these scholars na dili mga teachers you have to get a copy of the code of ethics for teachers the uh, the teachers manual and the different issuances from DepEd and from the yeah, from the civil service commission about the workplace no and those issuances nga makatabang nimo para di ka sige og pangutana na um, try to help yourself by investing time to read the issuances from DepEd and other government agencies that govern DepEd. Okay, nagasinabot pa taana. And then um, the fourth one is if you commit mistakes or misjudgments on certain situations, and if you are reprimanded by your by, by your superior, by your master teachers, by your, your level coordinator, by me, or by other as in principals and the principal, then you have to what? So yung buhato na na, kung kasukan ka, musukol ka. Na, of course, I would give you time to explain yourself. Okay? So explain yourself with truthfulness and ask, um, you know, and, and, and ask for understanding, especially nga pag umo. And, um, you know, don't be combatant. No? Mangisog yun ka. Rather, explain your side in, in a manner nga self para makasabot me unya. They put me more react negatively because we administrators are also busy people. We're not just dealing with teachers and students. We're dealing with different issues of the school. How we manage the school in the midst of this pandemic. And uh, my last subtopic, under responsiveness to stakeholders. So uh, I will be giving you personal tips on how to deal with your colleagues or your co-teachers. So when dealing with co-teachers, there is really no exact recipe because every day is a new day. And, but one thing is for sure, the vast and rich experience, teaching experiences of your colleagues can be tapped to help you overcome the challenges of your new job. So these teachers have been teaching for so long. Na? So matod pa sa Bisaya, padung pa ka, paulit na sila. Na? So um, daghan did kayo na silang mga experiences na makatabang ni mo. So what I would like to emphasize is when dealing with experienced colleagues, there is no need to fake yourself. There is no need to be too friendly and to be, be too accommodating. So what I am telling you is just present your true self. No? Be honest. Kaya kining mga tawhana, no? especially sa senior high school, ayaw mo kakurat. No? Ayaw basin makulture shock mo. Uh, teachers, majority of the teachers in the senior high school are very vocal with your ideas, with your opinions, and with your feelings, but it doesn't mean nga dilit na sila courteous and dilit na sila responsible. They are vocal because they want to, you know, to reason out, they want to express themselves, and it's your way of coping up with the demands na, of the new normal. But mind you, these co-teachers or colleagues of yours are very responsible people. No, so basin ma intimidated mo sa GC nga very sila very vocal sila nga na lang na sila but they are very friendly very helpful and very accommodating sa inyong mga mga requests for help okay so um, 
Morning, Echo Historia. Once again, welcome to 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 your new world. Before I will end my talk, allow me to uh, you know to give something or to give a uh, a trivia or one information about my life. So last school year, 2019-2020, the Department of Education through the Division of City Schools, Tagoran City, awarded me this plaque of recognition as an outstanding teacher for secondary school. Uh, when I was still assigned in Manga National High School prior to my promotion here in Dr. Cecilio Poto National High School. Why I am telling you this yeah, primarily because I want you to be motivated. I want you to hit, to, to set, to set and hit a target. So when I reapplied here in DepEd, because I was in DepEd from uh, for four for five years, school years 2000 to two thousand six. Before uh, and then I resigned and worked in Holy University, and some years abroad before I rejoined DepEd. I did not. I did not. Uh, you know even dream of having an award because I do not know that there is this platform of recognizing achievements of teachers. So when I re-enter DepEd, what is in my mind when I was still abroad and contemplating on returning and settling back here in the Philippines, I what I asked from God is to give me a teaching job in DepEd and I would give my best. So I was assigned in Manga National High School as a full time research teacher so that was really very challenging knowing that my experience in a university and abroad teaching and managing adult education are really different from the culture of deep ed but one thing that i would like to emphasize is in my heart i love teaching in my heart um, the intention is pure that I would like to inspire and I would like to make my students love research. So every day was very difficult um, giving the limitations uh, I experienced in the ed, like lack, 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 lack of resources, printed and online resources that would help me in teaching my students in research. And, you know, there were many issues, but if you have... If you have the love to your students, no? pwede ra ka mo innovate, pwede ra ka mangita o mga pamaagi nga very simple yet very effective. So, uh, kanang mga award like this one, secondary na siya, what is important is you personally observe your students learn no? the things and the skills, develop the skills that um, you are guiding them. No? Magi na importante nga makakita ta nga atong mga students na ay kabag-uhan, no, na sila na learn. Kanang mga awards, awards, ana, kanang mga recognition, ana, kanang pakapin na na siya. Okay? But I would not say nga, kuan kanang 100% good nga, uh, okay ang akong experience. Because as what I told you, daghan kayo challenging ang, ang, I'm sorry, daghan kayo challenging ang, ang teaching. But again, maulag na, if you have the passion, and if you have an open heart, Nga, every day is a new day for you, then you would take everyday experiences as a learning experiences. So welcome once again to the Senior High School Department of Dr. Cecilio Potong National High School. And I would assure you that as your assistant principal assigned to manage the Senior High School Department, I would be guiding you and uh, I would be coaching you so that you would have an enjoyable teaching experience here in Dr. Cecilia Putong National High School. Once again, congratulations and welcome to the teaching world.